Jacob Kraus here with Check This Out. So we recently had the April Apple event and I'm sure a lot of you have had a chance to watch the latest releases of the Apple products. So now we're able to purchase a new 4K Apple TV with a completely redesigned remote. We're getting the long awaited AirTags, a completely redesigned 24 inch iMac with the new M1 chip featuring an array of seven colorful designs and the 4.5K Retina display. I think all of these products and everything else being released are really cool, but today I wanted to talk about the new iPad Pro and give you my personal opinion and share some of my theories about the future of the iPad. I feel there's so much about to happen with the iPad, which is about to change the computing industry. So this year's iPad Pro will be getting the new M1 chip, which debuted at the end of last year. And people have been absolutely loving the incredible processing power of this new Apple Silicon, and myself included. I've been using the M1 MacBook Air to do all of my video editing and content creation. And before using this M1 chip, I would have laughed at anyone who told me that a small paper thin laptop would be replacing and performing similarly to my extremely super powered liquid cooled PC. And after I purchased this new Air, my PC has been pretty much retired and I only use it to play games now. So let's recap. This year's iPad Pro will be getting the same M1 chip and the new iPad will have 50% faster CPU performance and 40% graphics performance over last year's iPad, which was already insanely fast. And there's going to be more RAM. There's also going to be faster and larger storage options up to two terabytes. I feel the most important update is the Thunderbolt port, which will allow for faster transfer rates and docking capabilities. And we're going to talk about this in a second, but there's also other support for the latest Xbox and PlayStation game controllers. And other notable upgrades are the 5G support, a wide angle lens, which allows for a new feature called center stage, which is basically a wide angle lens that does you know, some software wizardry that keeps multiple people in the frame when you're um, FaceTiming and uh, doing any kind of video conferencing. So. Another huge upgrade is the 12.9 iPad will be getting the mini LED high dynamic range screen and Apple's calling this the Liquid Retina XDR. At first glance, all of these upgrades could simply look like another spec bump, but this couldn't be further from the truth. In my opinion, Apple is setting the stage for the iPad to truly become a multi-use, touch capable system which can become anything from a content consumption panel, a gaming console, an amazing drawing surface, desktop video editing system or anything else you want it to be. So think about this for a second. Why do few people use the iPad as their main computer system? There are four reasons why and actually one and two are somewhat related. But first of all, iPads previously didn't have the horsepower to run most of the creative software that people needed. and that's no longer the case. The M1 chip has proven that you can professionally run the Adobe Suite, Final Cut, 3D rendering programs, and all the intensive programs that creatives use. And number two, which is related to number one, all of the important programs that we rely on were never installable on the iPad. And I feel this is coming right around the corner, hopefully at WWDC this year. The hardware can definitely handle real software now. So the processing power is finally here and the fast and large storage options are also available. And there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to be seeing installable versions of popular creative programs in the coming months. They already work on the M1 chip and it's just a matter of porting this software over. And number three, docking capabilities. The Thunderbolt connection is by far the most significant upgrade in my opinion. I could never imagine myself doing real work with the Magic Keyboard. But now, if you want to turn your iPad into a desktop, you can easily do it with a Thunderbolt connection and connect it to a larger monitor, fast hard drives, keyboards, trackpads, and all of your peripherals. Plus, you still have the touch capabilities of the iPad itself. So this is a complete game changer. You can now literally turn your iPad into a desktop workstation at any time you want. And think about this, with the extra power and support for game controllers now, you can play amazing games up to 120 frames on the super fast screen. With new docking capabilities, you can also take your iPad and connect it to your monitor or TV and have a full console experience. So in some ways, 
now the iPad is competing directly with the Switch, the Xbox, and the PlayStation. And lastly, number four, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there thinking, ah, the iPad is never gonna replace my MacBook Pro because I like working off the full version of Mac OS. And trust me, I'm in the same boat. I think the difference between the Mac OS and iPad has always been file management. And in my opinion, the iPad has always had really weak file management. So now with better docking capabilities, access to hard drives, plus large amounts of internal storage, I feel Apple for sure is gonna be giving us better file management in the next versions of iPad to come. I feel over the next year, there's gonna be some big changes for the iPad. And my prediction, there's gonna be more of a blurred line between MacBooks and iPads. And I feel the iPad is gonna become more of a real computing device for power users and become even more versatile. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on my idea of the iPad and where it's going in the near future. Uh, you can hit me up in the comments. And if you do like my content, leave me with some thumbs up, hopefully a sub. See you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day. Talk soon.